Good afternoon. My name is Richard Cronois, and today we're going to talk about pivot tables. Most importantly, this is from my friend Carol. We're going to Carol and Michael's tonight for wine, a cozy fire pit, and good food. And this is for Carol because she wants to learn how to use uh, pivot tables. And special thanks to Carol and Michael for being friends. Before we begin, who is Richard Cronice? Well, if you haven't seen my other videos, let me just say that my name is unique. It is my brand. I'm the only Richard Cronice in the U.S. or anywhere. And there's more information about me at the end of this YouTube video. I hope that you'll subscribe today. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and leave some comments. So let's get to it and talk about a quick demo of why people love pivot tables. So here is a quick demo of using a pivot table when it's already been built. Well, I'm going over to uh, an Excel spreadsheet that I've already built. And you'll see uh, a data. There's some data. It's, it's short in nature. But let's see the, uh, I call it the pivot table problem. Let's see the pivot table answer. I've taken this information, salesman, product, customer, sales, <coughs> excuse me, I have a cold, and I have magically uh, transformed it into a pivot table. So what could I do with that? Well, you could do things like this. Uh, we see that we have a salesman, all salesman customers. I might take salesman and drag it down like that, and all of a sudden, we see the salesman of Cortez, Den Holly, Jackson, Jorgensen, and the sales that they have. I might also say that I'd like to see it by a customer. So I drag customer down like this, dragging a tile. Whoa, that, that's messy. I'm going to get rid of that. I'll take customer and put it back up here. Does that look better? So what you have are tiles that can be moved around. And uh, at its simplest, we might have for all customers, for all salesmen, how much do we sell for cell phones or computers or PDAs? So this is what a pivot table looks like. It's the ability to slice and dice your data to sort the data and give counts and information. And you have to learn how to work with it. But this is where you're heading. And uh, this is what a pivot table looks like when it's done. And this is what it looks like at the front end. So how do we do all this? Let's return to here. By the way, um, at yourexcelcoach.com, you'll find an ebook I have been selling on the internet since 2004. It takes MS Excel beginners and makes them into Excel power users. It's fun stuff. Um, just one moment, please. I'm kind of sick today. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, let's talk about pivot tables. They're really like pine trees. I don't know if you've seen a pine tree. Um, I've used this metaphor in class. I've taught pivot table to probably a thousand people. Um, uh, pivot tables and pine trees have a lot in common. Well, the pine tree behind my house looks very different every way you look at it. Now my pine tree, back of my house, is green from a distance and looks like a pine tree. But have you ever looked underneath a pine tree at night? It's kind of scary. Lots of branches underneath, uh, looks kind of naked, and whenever my wife sees it, she wants to trim the branches because they're not doing anything. So pine trees look very different depending on how you look at them. And your Excel data that has numbers looks very different. Whoops. Your Excel data has numbers, and it looks very different from different angles. Okay. Well, what's the first step in building a pivot table? Well, I just want you to know that a landscaper can look at your backyard and know how to design it. A home builder can look at a vacant meadow and know where to build a home. Well, an Excel person can look at Excel data and know that that data is perfect for a pivot table. Well, how does he or she do that? Well, let's take a brief visit over to Excel. Back to Excel here, uh, looking at the pivot table problem in the data. When I see this as an Excel person, when I see that I have rows of data, and you might call it a database, I call it a, a flat file spreadsheet. When you see that you have a spreadsheet that is uh, contiguous, there's no gaps, there's no breaks in the data, uh, you, have, you have no breaks like this. You don't have any breaks in the data. That would be a bad thing. So whether your data is just 20 rows or whether it's 2,000 or even 200,000 rows, if it has no breaks in the data, uh, that's a good chance for building a pivot table. This is really a good uh, candidate for pivot table because you have just one column that has numbers, and that's sales. And then you have what I call descriptors. You have salesman, product, and customer. 
if descriptors is too fancy a word for you, you can understand it. They're adjectives that, you know, for sales, a salesman named Smith sold this much. Um, the product was computers, and it was this much. So you have just one column. If you have one column of data that has numbers and a bunch of descriptors, you have possibility for a very good pivot table. So we're using a simple example on this one. So going back to this, now you've learned how to, to see data that is good for a pivot table. Now the second step is, well, okay, Rich, how do I build this stuff? As I said, you have one column that has numbers, and you want to analyze that data, and all the other columns have descriptors or adjectives like salesman, product, customer. Well, this all begins with insert pivot table. That's the command. Now watch my demo. Don't forget, insert pivot table. So we go over to here, and we're on this, clicking on it, and we do insert and over here we have pivot table. Now before I go down this road, let me say that Microsoft Excel has so many versions now, even in this century, they've got, uh, uh, at least they have Microsoft 2003, 2007, 2010, uh, Microsoft Excel 2013. There's at least four versions that I can think of right now, and perhaps there was a, an Excel 2000, I can't remember. But for sure, there's Excel 2003 and 7, and 2010 and 2013. So you have to learn how to use pivot tables in your own environment. So what you're seeing here is really for the ribbon kind of world and that would be Excel 2003 and Excel 2010. Most likely 2013 looks the same. So I click on the insert, I do pivot table and it says well what's the range? Now it knows because I clicked, I started from the data, it knows that the, <laughs> the range will be a4 to D20. Sorry, once again, I'm fighting off a cold. Now, it knows the data. That's really important. You want all the data analyzed. And you want to do it as a new worksheet. That'll be a worksheet down here. So I click on OK. And it's created one for me. And the sheet doesn't have a name. So I'm going to immediately give it a name. And I'll call it um, Carol's Pivot Table. And I haven't saved this in a while, so I'm going to uh, flick off a, uh, a file save. So I have file save. Now notice that everything is blank. Well, that's because I clicked off of the pivot table. You click back on the pivot table, and all of a sudden you have this information off to the right side. You click on the, uh, the other areas outside the pivot table, and you're lost. So you stay in the pivot table, and it's useful. The very first thing that I do is I bring over the column that had the uh, that has the numbers. So if we go back here to pivot table uh, problem, you'll remember that the one column that has the data, the numbers, is sales. So going back to Carol's pivot table, I take sales and I drag it right here. This is where I want it. I want this to be analyzed, and immediately this changes. Now. The next thing that you can do is you can start dragging over your descriptors or your adjectives. I call that salesman, product, and customer. Now, in one case, you can drag it over like this. You can drag over salesman. That's one way. You could also click on product, and it just does it automatically. It put product over here. And so, once again, you can click and you can drag it, or you can just click on it and it goes there. Um, this becomes difficult. Um, I'll put customer up there. Um, when you have a spreadsheet that's very complex, that has lots of columns, uh, if you had like maybe 10 columns, then picking and choosing what descriptors you would use would become more complex. But in this example, it's much easier because you have just four columns. Getting back to Carol's pivot table over here, uh, we've built it. So what can we do with it? Well, we can move it around. But first, let's go back to the spreadsheet just for a little bit to my uh, curriculum. Now, the second step is that you've built a simple pivot table. Um, and we've talked about this, having one column, all columns have descriptors, and this all began with insert pivot table, and you've seen the demo. Now, what happens is, this is really kind of the hard part for beginners, I think, just one of several hard parts with pivot tables, is that they have to play with their pivot table to, to make it look nice. I think one of the difficulties in building pivot tables for others is that your manager may ask you to build a pivot table, but really he or she doesn't know what they want because they don't know pivot tables. They're expecting you to magically come up with something. 
I've met very, very few managers who could really teach or talk pivot tables and give great instructions to their staff. So what happens a lot, uh, Carol, and this is for my friend Carol, is that um, staff people find themselves bu building pivot tables for managers that don't quite know pivot tables or have trouble describing what they want. So the third step is that you have to play with the pivot table until you get something that looks really useful and you often show it to your manager. So let's go back to Carol's pivot table and see how we could play. Well, we have salesman and we have customer. We have product, sum of sales. One thing we could do is we could take a uh, salesman and just uh, drag it. See, we're dragging it right to there. Now, does that look more useful? This keeps coming up today. I don't know why. So, salesman is here. Is that more useful or could we drag it down to here and is that more useful? That looks kind of messy, so I'll drag it back like that. Um, so, you find yourself playing with these tiles. I could make it really messy and bring customer down here and it looks kind of like a nightmare. But let's take um, Let's take product and drag it up. Is this starting to look better? Um, here we have by salesman, Cortez. This is all his, his or her sales. And by customer, we have the, those sales. So you begin to play with your tiles and drag them around and, and see what they look like. And, and you kind of hope for the best. And after a while, you become pretty, pretty good at doing this kind of stuff. And so we'll leave it like that because it makes sense. So it's really kind of like clay. You move it around. Um, just imagine that you're by my pine tree in my backyard. You're looking at it from the outside, from underneath. You play with the tiles. And once again, these are the tiles in this area. You move them around uh, until it looks reasonable. And you ask your manager if that's what he or she wants. Or if you are the manager or the financial analyst or data analyst, you stop when it's good. And of course, every now and then, you want to do a file save with this stuff. Um, just by uh, an example, you normally wouldn't have all these worksheets here. Normally you would just have the problem and you would have the solution there. Uh, and just a word to the wise that pivot tables, the last time I checked, take up a lot of memory. So you don't want to be making too many of them, too many you know, pivot tables. You just want to do like one on, on your spreadsheet. So once again, uh, let's return to our curriculum. So this is kind of a summary for uh, pivot tables. I think the really important part is you first you learn to recognize good Excel data that could become a pivot table. And that was over here. Once again, data that is contiguous, there's no breaks in, in the data, data that has uh, num uh, lots of descriptors, and that would be salesman, product, customer. And when you build pivot tables, begin with something that just has one column that has numbers. Typically, people do this for sales figures. So going back to our uh, outline. Second thing is you learn to build a pivot table. And just to reaffirm, that was the command, you know, insert, and then you do pivot table and you just go from there. This may be different uh, depending on whether you have an older version of Excel. And getting back to the last thing is you play with your data. You play with the data to make sure it, it meets your needs, and that was where I dragged the tiles around so it looks good and meaningful. It's good for you, perhaps good for your manager. So Thanks for visiting Dad's Learning Videos on YouTube today. I hope that you'll subscribe if you enjoy this video. My name is Richard Cronis. Uh, it's a unique name, unique brand. I am the only Richard Cronis in the U.S. I am a PMP from Chicago as of June 2013. Uh, I am a business analyst, a project manager, and uh, welcome to SharePoint uh, projects in this area. So I'm hoping that uh, You'll send me a new project, a training engagement. I can teach um, you know, via the internet or on person. And employers and recruiters are welcomed. Send a brief message to me on LinkedIn. So please tell your friends about YouTube, about my videos. And uh, I'd like to say that uh, I am accepting requests now for training engagements and Microsoft SharePoint projects. Most importantly, have a great day. Uh, sorry that my voice sounded a bit strange today. Uh, I do have a cold. Thank you so much for visiting. And once again, this was for my friend Carol. Carol, thanks a lot, and we look forward to having uh, dinner with you and Michael in an hour and a half. Best wishes, everyone. Thanks for visiting.